in typical teacherly fashion, Missy has assigned many people all sorts of functions, and I can't begin to know who you all are to help hold this, this together, but we do want to thank Vinny, who is uh, going to be regaling us with some of his music, and uh, Mark and Bob were our friendly ushers to welcome us. Um, I know Maureen is important, and uh, Louise is important. Many people help to make this celebration uh, what it is today. Oh, and my name is Jim Gray, and I'm uh, from the Dorset Congregational Church, but a friend of the families for a long, long time. So it was my privilege to care for them and for Hal as we ushered him into the next realm. Uh, so, on the evening he died, there was a wonderful harvest moon. Big and, and glorious, and uh, Missy went out to enjoy it after things had kind of settled down, and she found peace and uh, a certain ease after a long haul. And in so many ways, what, a, what an appropriate symbol for us this morning. We are harvesting all of the wonderful memories we have of Hal, all the fruits of his life, all the spiritual gifts that, uh, that he bestowed upon each and every one of us. So we are here for a spiritual harvest of love and affection for Hal. And I want to call on uh, William to offer uh, another kind of welcome. So, come join me. Oh, by the way, how is this, the volume? We good? Way back, we good? <coughs> so William is walking out. Advance. 
Muster your courage because I'd love it if you would join me in singing our two hymns, Simple Gifts and later on Amazing Grace. But right now, as we celebrate one man's beautiful life, let us also know that this is a service of worship. And let us call one another to worship our God. God is near to all who call, who call from their hearts. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. All who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my loving hand. Shall we join our hearts and our minds in the spirit of prayer? Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we gather here in the protective shelter of your love, praying that what we are about today will bring healing in the midst of our loss and that you will help us to replace the loss of the physical with the powerful presence of the spiritual. That we may feel your care each in the ways we need it the most. We gather here as your people, O oh God, conscious of others who've died before Hal, and of the frailty of our own existence here on earth. So help us, we pray, to live each and every moment as fully, as faithfully as we possibly can. We gather this glorious morning as a community, a community of memory and care, to comfort one another in our common loss, and especially Missy, Caitlin, and William, Virginia, Emily, Ramsey, and all of the generations of this dear family. Let them feel our understanding. Let them feel our total acceptance of their humanness. We also gather as worshipers this day, O oh God, to hear your words of hope that may drive away our despair and move us to offer you praise and thanksgiving for the life of Hal Wilkins, and to commend him into your resurrection, and to soulfully know that whether we live or die, we belong to you through Christ, who is the Lord of life on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. So how many of you know the tune? It's the old shaker tune. Uh, to the, the gift of to the gift to be simple. Some of you? Well, you'll learn it and it'll stick with you all day, I guarantee. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where I
and the glory forever. Amen. Vinny? Your dainty little voice will 
never be heard of. <laughs> Somebody knows me too well. <laughs> I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh even from the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved, and he that keepeth thee will not sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not slumber, nor sleep. The Lord himself is thy keeper. The Lord is thy defense upon thy right hand, so that the sun shall not burn thee by day, neither the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil. Yes, it is even he that keepeth my soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So we're, we're going to have a time of remembrance, a time for us to tell stories and share perspectives on Hal's life. And we have two designated speakers, but you'll notice that after uh, they are finished, we're going to open things up to anyone who might want to uh, contribute. Uh, and, and please, I'm encouraging you who do want to share something spontaneously to use the microphone so that we can all get the, the nuances of your <laughs> dear memories. But I wanted to start out this, this section with a poem that I wrote titled Memory by Recollection. And I want to start it with uh, a wee bit of scripture from uh, the Gospel of Luke. They urged him strongly, saying, stay with us. It is almost evening. The day is nearly over. So he stayed with them. And when he was at table, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Mm -hmm. and suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And then he vanished in their sight. We celebrate how. And what can we say? Seldom, if ever, he threw things away. Perchance he might need whatsoever someday. Now, ours for the sorting, Lord help us. <laughs> Tools of plenty and rock climbing gear. Athletic hardware he once did revere. Things of Hal's hobbies from old yesteryear. Letters from loved ones he cherished so dear. In boxes and lockers and corners accrued in basements or closets. If only you knew the stuff that he treasured, like it was brand new. Lord, grant us the wisdom to know what to do. <laughs> and each little item and trinket does birth a wonderful story of Hal on this earth. An outdoor adventure that speaks of his worth, a project of his we remember with mirth. Not that Hal's things were his idols of bliss. Family and friends did he love more than this. It's only that sometimes in grief's murky mist, our memories need help with a gentle assist. <coughs> Collections can breed recollections sublime. Spirit and stuff can often combine. Tokens and totems can help to enshrine your memories of life in those warm, loving times. So look all around us in gracious display, the people and things that help us today to recollect Hal and his spirit convey. Lord, help him live on in our hearts. This we pray. And now I invite Bettina or Bettina, however she's... Tina? Tina? Yes, Tina. Uh, you're among friends. So <laughs> well, believe it or not, you think we were in cahoots, but we were not. But uh, my my words are similar to you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll 
arm wrestle later. So you'll have to excuse me. My heart is a clutter. Uh, and I have to keep myself under control. So I just want you to know that. Um, I do wish to say good morning to everybody. And this is such an honor that I was invited to speak here today. Nobody wants to do this. I mean, I like doing it because I love Tao, but I still don't want to do it. Um, my name is Bettina Donaldson. I met Hal when we were both probably lost. He had dropped out of base. I was six months out of high school. Another friend and I, the three of us, her name was Janet. We got in my 1969 Toyota and just every weekend went somewhere in New England. And it didn't matter where. Somebody was home, let's go visit them. And the interesting thing about Hal is that everybody had a crush on Hal. <laughs> Parents, girls, kids, everybody loved him. You know, he had a temper that he shared with his closest loved ones. But generally to us outsiders, he was very gentle. So uh, I was living in Tasville, Vermont, and he was indecisive about dates. And we did our tootle, but I was not a drinker, but I was introduced to Pinky Top of Wine. Uh, that lived in my Toyota for a year, a new bottle. But the thing about that stuff is it was a cross between pink lemonade and I think that to Bismol, but I can't totally remember. You just you liked it, so you drank it. Dean, you kept looking for liquor stores for years. Yeah. Right. Uh, he was he was actually a lot of fun and very, very easy going. He was probably 21, I was probably 19. I'm sure my other friend and I hoped that someday we'd hook up, which is probably good we didn't. <laughs> he made his way into all the families. The parents loved him. They wanted them to, him to be their son. It just was endless. So wherever we went, we were welcome. <laughs> but I do believe that Hal was a pure gentleman and a gentleman. He possessed so many wonderful qualities and a laugh that was so full of life. He was humble and funny, curious, adventurous, talented, and besides being the original cookie monster, <laughs> he also loved his pink catalpa and a good beer. Hal had so many talents that sprung up everywhere. He was never boastful about his life. He was never boastful about his abilities. He was repeatedly humbled by the love from his wife, Missy, his children, his extended family, and his friends. He thought very, very, very hard this summer of how he could make Missy more comfortable going forward. And that is an incredible mindset when you're facing your own mortality. While visiting this summer, Hal, Missy, Kate, and I looked up Joseph. Curious about his middle name. I think he was even curious about his middle name. And he, St. Joseph came up as patron saint of workers, fathers, travelers, and dying a peaceful death. Very fitting of Hal. Hal was an eternal explorer, as been mentioned by Will. Uh, he could climb mountains literally. But he could also glue, tack, staple gun, cement, <laughs> nail, bungee cord, anything together. <laughs> he was extremely resourceful in work and play. One of his most endearing gifts was his sentimental nature. Hal had a collection of friends and adventures to beat the band. As Missy often said, he rented a condo on memory lane. <laughs> he saved everything, as has been mentioned. Friendships, memories, letters, all correspondence, postcard collection, maps, books, tools, old clothing. He was very happy to get into his skinny jeans. I remember he mentioned this summer as he was sick. He did have some pride. He saved things because they all represented a time in his life. And the people he shared that time with, and his love for them, and their love for him. Hal honored and valued these memories so deeply, a touchstone to the people he loved so deeply. Within the sorrow is grace, and when we are closer to death, we are closer to life. Rest in peace, Hal St. Joseph Wilkins. You are deeply loved, and you will be deeply missed. Christopher, where four are now? <laughs> Well, 
Well, good morning to you all. Uh, when Missy first asked me to say something, I said, well, what should I say? She just make me laugh. <laughs> so, uh, Hal and I first met at Eastern Mountain Sports, probably uh, in the early 70s. He drove a newer Dodge Power Wagon, and it had a really big German Shepherd, made dreadful. <laughs> We remodeled Eastern Mountain Sports stores, and the biggest one we did was on Commonwealth Avenue in Boston. Work days would start early with Hal and I riding bicycles around in the store. <laughs> Freeze dried turkey tetrazzini without reconstituting it. <laughs> I like uh, freeze dried cherries. <clears throat> there was no real construction plans. We basically had Hal would tape out where the counters were going to go, where the display counters go, and we'd sort of build them from there. Uh, and we kind of figured it out as we went along. The work area was roped off, but customers could still see what we were doing. And Dreadful would stay in the work area with us, and since we had free Bud, uh, that was part of our pay, unlimited amounts of Budweiser, Hal would throw the empty cans to Dreadful and would crush them in his teeth, Sometimes the blood dripping down, and there was oohs and ahs from the customer, but that would get a big chuckle out of that. <laughs> Hal also explained to me that EMS didn't really stand for Eastern Mountain Sports. It really stood uh, for the, it was the initials of the real brains and the money behind the store, some mysterious guy named Earl M. Shithook. <laughs> though, though we never met Earl, unfortunate events. <laughs> Even as recent as this past August, Earl's hand could be seen in the disappearance of the canoe from well behind the pile of free stuff Hal had put out on the road. <laughs> I think we hit it off because we had both been kids in central Massachusetts, Hal and Oakham, and me in Brookfield and New Braintree. His family also had a place on South Pond, and we figured that we'd likely have been swimming there at the same time we were kids. Uh, we also shared an offbeat sense of humor. We were easily distracted by things that were more interesting than what we were supposed to be working on. <laughs> As some of you may know, Hal bemoaned what he perceived to be the lack of common sense in people. He was convinced uh, it was due to what he called excessive amounts of duda that accumulated in people's brains over time. And he illustrated this to me in great detail along with drawings, carefully printed out labels and everything, uh, on the top of the tape saw. And I think he thought it up on the spot. As Hal explained to me, when a person is born, their brain is just full of common sense. And there's a little piece of doodah over the <laughs> And But the brain sits in the well of useless information. And so all the information has to come in through these tubes that are equipped with sanity filters. But over time, the sanity filters get clogged, and your brain gets more and more doodah. <laughs> Until it pushes up all the common sense, and all that's left is do that. <laughs> so, and that, that was an outcome that Hal believed explained the actions and decisions of a lot of people. <laughs> One summer, I worked for Hal, and our project was to build a pole barn, which required that the poles be dug to build these big poles. A task that the backhoe we had was not up to, given the size of the boulders we Hal returned from the building's supply store one day, very excited because he had found a solution. Do you know that for 350 I can get a dynamite permit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, $350 sounds like a lot of money, he says, no, no, it's $3.50. <laughs> so not long after that, he returned with a box of 60% of giant jellies, sticks of dynamite, a box of fuses, and uh, I mean, a box of blasting caps and a large, large, large amount of fuse. Uh, I think I know what that meter is. <laughs> he, says, he said, this is great, but he said, they are out of instruction books. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy described how to do it. <laughs> we'll figure out the details. So our first attempt at using the dynamite, we barely budged, budged this huge boulder. So 
Hal reasoned that if two sticks weren't enough, then maybe we should use four. <laughs> so we did, and succeeded in launching a half-ton boulder halfway across the field. <laughs> it was not the most effective approach, but one we continued to use, although we weren't setting the charges correctly. That part of it was one of the details of the instruction. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so we used all but three sticks of dynamite to move the rocks. But after a week or so, the dynamite starts to sweat, which isn't good because it's actually uh, the explosive on the outside of the dynamite. So I was wondering how to get rid of this stuff, and I jokingly suggested we reenact the battle of the OK Corral. That's the last reason we remember. Hal's eyes brought one up. He got that quirky smile. Ooh, good idea. So we put the dynamite out in the field and shot out of the rifles until it exploded. And we didn't work together much after that. <laughs> kept in touch through late night phone calls, often fueled by the requisite IPAs. And the advent of emails made it easier to stay in touch and allowed for even more silliness. I would sometimes receive emails from Earl you know, telling me to move the heavy weapons to the Massachusetts border to support an invasion of Vermont. <laughs> and when I was in, C in Cambridge area from time to time, Hal would often drive you know, a couple hours down to meet me at Christopher's, a bar in Porter Square that had a rotating selection of interesting beers. And our interests had shifted to energy projects, opportunities, me and natural gas and electricity, hal and timber, sawmills, biomass, electricity. And there were long conversations about project development and opportunities. It was a tough task for many in that field with a few wins and a lot of dead ends. Uh, and he, hal was in California this past summer and he stopped by for a short visit. I showed him some of the sites around Grass Valley in Nevada City. Uh, we went to Bridgeport to see the longest single-span covered wooden bridge in the world, which was very interesting. It was built in 1862. Continued on to near-empty mining town of North Bloomfield and nearby hydraulic mining sites before ending up at a local brewery. <laughs> well, Hal was looking forward to returning and spending more time in the area and to go hiking in the Sierra. But on July 27th, I got an email from Hal. It said, out of the blue. He said, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to get to Grass Valley this fall. So in August, I came out to visit Hal and Missy. And Hal and I got to spend a couple of days together. Uh, on one day, we sorted tools in the lower barn. <laughs> Hal liked old tools, maybe too much. He knew each one of them, remembered where he got them, and whether there was another one around somewhere. <laughs> He wasn't a pack rat as much as he collected things that to him went together. Tools, friends, ideas, projects, and he liked making connections between them all. Another day we went to Paulette, stopping first in the town office of Land Grove, and Hal showed me where someone had broken in and stolen $8.63. <laughs> we that they would have made a lot more money if they'd just taken the cherry countertops. <laughs> We continued driving through Peru. You know you've, you've entered Peru because the roads are paved. Uh, and then west of the back roads to pick up Route 30, 30 in Dorset and on to Paula. And as we drove, Hal pointed out features of the small towns, where mills, where mills used to be, watersheds, where the geology changed. It was almost like, as we were driving, like he was taking care of all of us. Uh, so I left Hal at the Paula town office for a few hours. And when I picked him up, he was very excited because he had gotten a lot of work done. Uh, <clears throat> no one knew he was there because his truck wasn't on the front, so they didn't stop in. But he did get to meet a, a new guy I never met before. He was all excited about talking about permitting issues. Uh, <clears throat> then we headed back to Wyndham around 3.30, taking a short swing through Manchester for gas. And there was a rack of free publications at the gas station. So Hal took one of each because it was free. <laughs> and as we drove east past Bromley with a view to the south, Hal remarked that he didn't think he could ever leave her alone. So, I'm going to miss him. Anyone else?
else want to make such a dull guy <laughs> seem a little more colorful? <laughs> yeah, I see a hand way back. Come on forward. Does this, does this work? You have to turn both of them on. No, it doesn't. Does the other thing work? <laughs> no, this There's a power good. button on the bottom and the top. It'll work. That's okay. You gotta use this one. Sorry. Hi. I wasn't expecting to come up here, but I just, um, I just, I want to try to keep this up, too, because we all be so too. Um, okay. I'll just try to make this short. I knew how. I met Hal through helping me with some permitting things and, and wetlands and. And, and such to make sure we kept them that way. And the projects, all three of them that he helped me on, the first one, it was 22 below zero, and he still came when we walked the property line. Um, that was interesting, and we did great, and we, the whole time, Hal talked about his wonderful family and Missy and his and a great sense of humor, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> Second time, it was, um, no, that's how long ago he helped me with this project, Missy. Thank you so much for letting him take that time to help me. So anyway, the other one was um, a very interesting property um, that, a good friend of mine in his 90s wanted to donate to a historical society and it had very unique things and problems and Hal, he was so humble. I can only say, like all of you know him, all of you in a different way, humble, 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 always. His work, his ideas were so, I took them seriously and, and um, he was just amazing. So anyway, but it was always fun. It was always funny because he had a great sense of humor. So we got through all that, and then um, we had another project, a third project together. But it was always very unusual situations with lots of water flooding, or 20 below zero, it seemed. <laughs> it was, but, but this is the last thing I want to say, and this is the kind of family that they have that will always mean so much. Um, a couple years ago, before they moved up here, on their back west, Mr. Uh, road, west, Back West was the room. So they invited um, myself and my two granddaughters to this function, that, you know, just to get together with a few friends and have dinner. And, and so they lived in an area where there wasn't very good reception with the phone, and I did too. Well, what we didn't know was it was a blazing snowstorm, and they had canceled the party and had it another day. So my granddaughters are all dressed up, and they're all happy to come and be with Missy and their family. And so we get there to their house, and if all of you ever knew the driveway that Hal had, <laughs> right, with this giant equipment, right? So my granddaughters and I, we get there, of course, the snow now is like eight inches deep, and I said, you know, maybe they're not having it. And um, so we see Hal, you know, with the big equipment, and we were down at the bottom, and the road was closed, I think, at that point. And Hal's like, you know, come on. So, <laughs> okay. So this driveway goes up, and I had forward drive, and thank God. But he had this giant driveway, all plowed. We get to the top, we get out. Hal said, hey, you made it up okay. He said, only because you did such a great job plowing. And I said, you know, I didn't think you'd still have it. He said, well, come on in, to come on in, because we did cancel it. <laughs> we go, my granddaughter was so excited to come, right? Missy and, and Hal was so sweet. And they'll never forget this. They'll never forget it because they were so lovely. They still had their little candles, all their dinner things. And it was such a special time. And they still talk about it. And they loved it. And that's the kind of people that these guys are. And we love them. And thank you for the wonderful good times. And thank you for having the patience to let your husband help me with all these zoning things. <laughs> thank you. sit in the back, you're eventually going to have to come to the front. <laughs> you must all be congregationalists. <clears throat> Don't worry, mine will be short.
I don't know what initially attracted me to Hal Wilkins. It's been a long time. I think it was probably these things. <laughs> I said, I gotta get to know this guy because nobody wears limber boots in church, <laughs> wherever he went. I think that's uh, one of the things that I had in common. I also couldn't ever believe that a guy would wear shorts in December. <laughs> it seemed like that's what he always wore. I also had a shared a love of mountains and climbing. We both had worked at one time in our lives for the Appalachian Mountain Club. His authors, his library, was always just drawing me in because I love to read about mountains and climbing, and he knew all of the best authors, and he collected, as you guys all know, probably the best books. I'll bring them to you, sir. <laughs> He always used to drag me and my wife, Ginger, to uh, see Vinny because he had an incredible love for old rock and roll and he also loved Vinny. <laughs> Hal also had a partner, like I do, that supported him through thick and thin. And I thank you, Mr. The other thing is, is he also enjoyed a very good group. Which leads me to my only story that I'll tell you. In 2016, I was working uh, down way below our farmhouse in Athens on my Christmas tree plantation. And I'm running saws and doing all the things that you would do to try to maintain a couple thousand trees. And I got finally got to a point where I couldn't do it anymore. The bugs were killing me. I had to come back up. And when I got to the top of the the, uh, the road in front of the house, there was a Sam Adams brew sitting in the middle of the lawn. It was an Oktoberfest. And, I, and I, for the life of me, I could not figure out who or where that, maybe it was me, maybe I just had a kind of a dumb spell and put that beer up there, but I couldn't figure out where that came from or who did that. And I don't know if you guys know, but how it was also uh, kind of eccentric, <laughs> and also an incredible, incredible uh, person, uh, a prolific emailer. <laughs> I had emails, you know, I still have them, and I'll always cherish them. So I want to read one email that came in to our house a couple of days after this event, where I was racking my brain trying to figure out where this beer came from. And this is to my wife, Ginger. If the dancing girls hadn't had the volume on the CD player turned to max, Jay may have heard me yelling for him. I had to stop several times driving down the access road to remove what appeared to be ladies' underwear, minimal swim uh, togs, etc., and all in the right of way. I did leave an emergency beer, Harpoon Oktoberfest, for Jay or one of his friends. The tractor was in the field, idle. <laughs> Who knows where the action was located? <laughs> hey. I'm going to miss it. There, we primed the pump. Everybody to come and be with him all the time. His <laughs> ultimate dream was that 
all four of his children would live at home with him. <laughs>
and Vinny is going to play in the background, and we're going to feel the closeness of Hal's spirit as he does. Let's be in silent meditation. them and live them 
and share them to make this world a better place. We thank you, O oh God, that he is no longer suffering through cancer, no longer saying farewell, but saying hello to each of us through his undying and ever-living spirit, and that he is with you in your eternal love. In your holy power and name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So, once again, let's lend our voices to sing a couple of verses of Amazing Grace. And let's stand as we do.